Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and in this video, what I want to do is see if we can work with um, metric evaluations. Um, so I'm going to go over to SageMaker, and we're going to create a new uh, notebook. Um, I completely tear it down. Now, actually, before I do that, I just want to make sure my AWS costs are down, because I, <laughs> I, I saw a big bill here again. I'm just getting kind of worried. Uh, you know, even for me, it can be kind of uh, challenging to keep on top of this stuff. So, you know, just make sure you check. But I was running Open Search uh, the other day. I don't think I have any instances running. But, uh, you know, again, friendly reminder, always to double, triple check your costs. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't have anything running, so I guess I'm okay here. But anyway, let's go back to um, our notebooks here. I'm going to go into Studio. And we're going to open up Studio here. And once that's open here, we will... Uh, we'll just wait a moment for um, uh, this. And so what I want to do is go over to Jupyter Lab. And yes, I'm going to need a new lab space. This is just going to be for uh, evals. And we're going to just try to do a very simple one like with blue. And just so you know, I've already used ChatGPT. He said, hey, can you give me a simple example? And we'll see if we can walk through this. And so, you know, I'm familiar with N N N NLTK because I actually worked on a... Uh, a project a few years ago utilizing it. So I'm hoping that the code just works um, and we together can figure out this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and run this on the MLT3 medium. And when, once that's spun up, we'll try to bring the code over here. Of course, as always, I'll have the, the notebook uh, for you afterwards that you can utilize, but we'll spin this up here quickly, okay? All right, our space is running. Let's go ahead and open Jupyter Lab notebook, SageMaker notebook. And we'll just give that a moment to load. There we go. Let's go ahead and make a new notebook. This one's going to be, mm, we're going to name this blue. And not the proper blue, but the funny name blue. So go ahead here and say blue. Um, and we'll import this. And again, I'm just following what I have over here. So you, you might have to type it out or get it from the repo. But let's go ahead and see if we can get this going here. Now, this we might have to install. No, apparently it's already uh, a part of uh, this environment. If you don't have it, then you might have to go above here. You know, if you're running this locally, do pip install NLTK, right? And do that. But it's already installed here on this machine. So here it's suggesting we download a data, data set. So we'll go ahead and do that. Mm, and it's working great. And by the way, we can just go take a look at this really quickly if people aren't familiar with it. This is the Natural Language Toolkit. Okay. A leading platform for building Python programs to work with human language data. It provides easy to use interface for 50 corpa lexical resources. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a really good library. And so we're just able to quickly download data here to start working with it. So what are our next steps? Well, here it's telling us to have a reference trans translation. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this text here. I remember blue is good for checking if one thing's translated to another one. So here we have the cat is on the mat, and there is a cat on the mat. Uh, we'll go ahead and tokenize those. And it seems like it's having a bit of a problem. We'll scroll on down, see what the problem is. So here it says, the resource punk tab not found. Please download the NLTK downloader to obtain the resource. Um, okay, fair enough. So we'll go ahead. I guess we're going to have to do a little bit more here. And we'll just grab this one. It's interesting that uh, the first one wasn't sufficient, but that's totally fine. And so now we'll go ahead and try this again. There we go. The next thing is the candidate translation. The cat set on the mat. Okay. And then between them, we're going to go run our, our, our blue score. So we'll go ahead and run this. And we'll hit enter. And so it says the blue score is 0, 2, 9, 3, 9. So what does that mean, right? What are we making sense of here? Um, so the question is like, what is the similarity between the texts? And so, you know, if it was a perfect match, then it would be one, or if there's if there's lower overlap, it's it's 0. 0.2. So let's go ahead. As so we have the cat sat on the mat, the cat is on the mat. 
So I'm just trying to think of a way that we can change this. So we have references and candidate. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one here. We're going to say the cat is on the mat. And place this here. I would have thought the score would have been higher. And then we'll go ahead and run this here. And then run it again. And now we have a perfect score, okay? So it's showing whether things are uh, similar or not. Um, there are other ways that we can do our blue score. And so over here, they're suggesting, you know, there's different weightings. So I think it is, oh yeah, the weight's over here, right? So let's just take a look here. So by default, uh, uniform weights are up to four grams. You can adjust the weights for, uh, to focus on different n-grams. The n-grams are the parts that are broken up. So you know when we tokenize it, I believe that we're producing n-grams. And so here it's suggesting that we are changing the balance between them. Um, and so, you know, I'm not fully aware of that, but, you know, we might want to try something else. So let's see if we could do me uh, Rogue and Meteor. So, you know, can we see, can, can we extend this tutorial to use Meteor, Meteor and Rogue. Okay, and so I'll see what that produces out here in just a moment and we'll continue on.